Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you are joining us from, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm from Business Review, and I'll be your host today. It's our pleasure to have APTA CSP Technologies with us today, who will be presenting this webinar about rethinking oral solid dose packaging. Today's guest speakers are Bajre Hammond, Director, Corporate Business Integration, APSA Pharma, Craig Volmick, Vice President, Business Development, APSA CSP, and Maria Krish, PhD, Senior Scientist, FreeThink Technologies Incorporated. I'd like to welcome you all to our webinar platform on 24. You'll notice that this webinar is browser-based, so if you disconnect for any reason, please just click on the link you received by email to rejoin the session. If you want to ask questions, you can send them in via the questions widget. Just type them into the box at the top left-hand corner of your screen and click Submit, and we'll have some time at the very end to address any questions or thoughts that you may have. Please use the yellow Help widget if you require any assistance, and you can move, resize, and maximize end of the windows in front of you to get a better view of the slides. But for now, please allow me to welcome Bajre Hammond. Over to you, Bajre. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, very pleased to have you. Looks like we have a diverse uh, audience from different parts of the world, so pleased to have you with us today. We'll be talking about rethinking or solid dose packaging, and we'll hopefully today cover how we can improve stability, shelf life, <clears throat> and time to market using this active blister technology. So <clears throat> um, I am joined by uh, Craig from Aptar, who is responsible for business development for drug delivery packaging, and Maria Krish from FreeThink, a specialty company focused on stability modeling, and we're collaborating to serve our customers in terms of the overall product development packaging solutions. Uh, what we'll be talking about today, we'll start with the basic uh, existing packaging solutions. We'll compare and contrast existing products in the marketplace, we will introduce a new solution of active packaging for sensitive drugs, the active blister, and what does it mean to uh, existing and future products. We'll talk about Accelerate, uh, which is a new product development services uh, solution that we have developed with the contribution of FreeThink using their proprietary software. Uh, we'll close with an overview of the supply chain, key stakeholders, and a go-to-market uh, strategy. Uh, next couple of slides, I'll spend, spend some time introducing Aptar for those of us that don't know, don't know who we are. Uh, Aptar is a publicly traded company. It operates in uh, uh, three key markets, pharmaceutical market, beauty and home, and food and beverage. Uh, the pharma group is organized in three divisions, consumer health care, injectables, and prescription division. The pharma division operates in uh, uh, key application fields largely driven by the route of administration. As you can see in this slide, it varies from nasal, pulmonary, injectables, eye care, dermal, and other routes such as sublingual or buccal sprays. In terms of the scale and the patient population that we reach and the diversity of customers that we interact with over the globe, Abtar Pharma serves about 1.6 billion patients worldwide are using our products. There are about 6 billion systems produced every year and about $50 billion products existing in the marketplace today are using our delivery system, whether component or complete delivery system. So to give you an idea of the scale, uh, markets got to reach and global footprint for the Aptar group, particularly the pharma group. So with that, we've, we've been uh, pleased to introduce uh, Aptar CSP to the Aptar family. Um, Aptar acquired CSP in August 2018, and it's, uh, uh, CSP is a leader in active packaging uh, solutions. They're really a material science-based company focused on innovative, highly engineer active packaging solutions. They are headquartered in Alabama uh, with a global footprint. 
This, they produce about a billion components annually and have manufacturing sites, three manufacturing sites worldwide. Um, they operate in a pharmaceutical market, diagnostics area, probiotics, and food safety. So um, CSP complements uh, Optar Group's uh, innovative delivery system solutions, and we now are pleased to uh, um, onboard CSP from a packaging uh, perspective, particularly active packaging, to our product uh, solution and offering. So before I, I, I hand off the, uh, the presentation to Craig, who will talk specifically about Active Blister and the packaging solutions, I want to just spend a little bit of time introducing the core technology of, of CSP. And when we think about um, the core technology for uh, CSP, we think about a, a three-phase material science-driven technology. And it operates in, 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 in three-phase materials. One is a base polymer, um, that's the majority polymer, that's, that's one phase. The active polymer, which is the material performing the chemistry. And a channeling agent, uh, minority polymer, which is immiscible, which does not mix with the, the, uh, the, the base polymer. And this feature allows us to control the kinetic with which the active material is released, absorbed, or in some cases doing the same, time, the same thing. So this material can be injected molded, as you can see in the figure, thermoformed, extruded in the film, or blue molded, or hot, or hot melt. One of the key advantages of the, of the, the CSP technology in this space is the ability for, for the company to be able to compound the material in-house, which secures quality and supply chain. So what does it do? Uh, this particular innovative proprietary technology allows uh, um, our partners to be able to control moisture, scavenge um, gases for aldehyde oxygen, or it can have an antimicrobial activity for different types of products. It could emit uh, aromas, CO2s. In some cases, these are useful uh, uh, opportunities. And it also can remove odors um, if some packaging and drug products uh, suffer from these uh, limitations. So it's a fairly comprehensive and unique uh, drug product opportunity that really kind of provide bespoke and tailored um, active packaging. <clears throat> and this slide to close my section is to give you a, a, an area, a flavor of the therapeutic areas where uh, CSP plays in. So as I mentioned earlier, it's a material science deployed in key therapeutic areas. And one of the product offerings, active vials, active seal, pharma puck, and, and active film, these are components that are integrated, whether integrated or in conjunction with the overall packaging system where CSP provides solutions. So we have products in the marketplace uh, in, in the transdermal space, like a hormone patch, in the drug delivery space, uh, like antifungal, diagnostic, glucose monitoring, as you can see in the image there, vial. That's our vial with integrated active packaging inside the vial that is protecting the, the strip. So real impact on the patient uh, um, uh, healthcare in these solutions. Probiotic as well, uh, as a dietary supplements, we are protecting a product in, in the probiotic space. And in the medical device space, um, we are part of implants, and this is an example of them, which is a neurotrans simulator, which is uh, something embedded in the patient. So as you can see, you get a, a feel of a range of, of uh, uh, therapeutic areas where we operate, it ranges from transdermal, medical device, diagnostic, et cetera. So we operate in these key uh, uh, market segments. And with that, I will um, transition to um, Craig, who will begin to talk about specifically Active Blister and the technology that we'll be pursuing for rethinking uh, oral uh, solid dose packaging. Craig? Uh, thank you, Padre. Uh, to begin, uh, oral solid doses have long phase stability challenges associated with moisture and oxygen. It's fairly commonplace to open up a bottle of medication, find a sachet or a canister inside. They are there to protect that oral solid dose from moisture oxygen. 
And these challenges are only projected to increase in the future because the pipeline, a lot of development of, of larger, lower solubility molecules, new controlled release technologies, and more potent APIs. Combine that with regulations and standards for stability are only getting tougher. The bar is being raised. Together, these trends developments are creating demand for a more effective, efficient packaging-based solution for moisture and oxygen management. And that is why we're here today. Uh, but before we talk about solutions, it's helpful and insightful to talk about the sources of moisture and oxygen that we're seeking to manage. While I mentioned uh, a bottle in the previous slide, you can see the image of a blister here. Our focus today is, is absolutely about blisters and blister technology. Uh, and with that, so looking at this blister, there are really three sources of moisture that we're trying to manage here. One, uh, within the initial headspace of the blister, so at the time of packaging, air moisture is trapped inside the blister package. Two, uh, there is can be uh, ingress through that package over time. And third, there is initial water content of the oral solid dose. Uh, and I would say sometimes this is overlooked and can be a significant source of moisture in this system, certainly as we take a system approach to managing moisture. For oxygen, it's a little more straightforward. Uh, there are two sources what is inside that blister at the time of packaging the headspace, and also ingress uh, through that package. Uh, but a blister, unlike a bottle, you know, has some specific challenges. Uh, the obvious one is a very confined space. There is no drop-in sachet or canister to manage moisture and oxygen within such a small space. Um, and it might also be necessary and beneficial to minimize both you may want to minimize oxygen and moisture within your uh, package to optimize your shelf life there. And this is not simply a design problem. Uh, we want to minimize production impact. And uh, most importantly, we want to avoid a complicated package for the customer. And we all face uh, time, speed to market challenges. We want to avoid lengthy development and at all costs avoid uh, reformulation here. So not only are there sources to uh, manage, but also unique challenges associated with blister packaging. Uh, so with that, I'd like to spend the next three slides looking at some uh, current options for blister headspace management, talk about some of the, the pros and cons for each. Uh, first, uh, what, you're, what you're seeing now is secondary packaging. And that image on the upper right, that's a blister card that is put into a foil pouch and inside is also placed a sachet. So when it's closed up, that pouch is an excellent moisture barrier. And what you're doing is you're absorbing all of that moisture around the blister, taking away the moisture that might ingress in there, protecting it against that source of moisture. That sachet could also be designed to pull out moisture from inside that blister. Uh, but as you would guess, as soon as the customer opens up that foil pouch and removes it, uh, the protection is lost there certainly a little more complex for that end user. Uh, second, another option that is practiced today, uh, fishbone designs, and uh, maybe a note on that terminology. So the, the image you're looking at the lower right, there are uh, blisters, uh, locations for the oral solid dose, and in the middle there's a large uh, section for that desiccant or scavenger. These are connected by small channels, sometimes referred to as a fishbone. Uh, so you can imagine you're able to scavenge the air that's in there at the time of blistering. Uh, but also evident, this is a much larger blister footprint. Uh, you're adding additional materials uh, and can be more complex for the end user. But effective, again, at eliminating the moisture or oxygen in that headspace. Uh, next, uh, looking at cold form foils. Uh, we talked about ingress. Uh, this is an excellent barrier for protection, uh, keeping moisture and oxygen out. Uh, but it, by design, does not address the initial water content of the tablet. It actually can hold it inside. And as you can also see here with the fish bone, it's a slightly larger footprint versus the thermoform. Uh, there are also foils with an integrated desiccant. 
these can help mitigate ingress through the edges, but uh, provide only a fixed desiccant capacity per blister and are addressing uh, moisture as well. Uh, for oxygen, there are fewer options out there that are practiced today. Uh, this is uh, the most popular nitrogen purging. So in your packaging process, you are pushing out the air, which contains oxygen, and replacing it with nitrogen. These are often custom uh, equipment that are installed on a blister line. Uh, there is a safety aspect of this. You must monitor the oxygen levels in the room uh, for the safety of the operator. It can be effective at reducing oxygen to a certain point, but uh, our own learning is below 8 10%. It can be more difficult to achieve consistently. And again, this is about replacing the initial headspace, but does not address uh, in any oxygen that might ingress over the shelf life of your product. Uh, so with that, now we've gone through the sources and uh, some of the options. I'll hand this back over to our host, Kyle, for a, a polling question. Uh, Kyle? Oh, yep, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, to everyone watching, to take part in this poll, uh, just click all the options that apply to you, uh, click Submit, and then wait for the next slide to view the live results. But our question is, what current packaging solutions do you use for reducing moisture? Secondary packaging, fishbone designs with desiccant, CFS, or thermoform, cold form foil, CFS, desiccated foil, reformulate, or other. Okay, so we're going to give you a little bit of time to vote on that. Uh, Craig, what made you ask this question then? Yeah, very interested. We have a nice, broad, diverse audience with us, so this will give us uh, insight into our audience here. We might speak to some of these specific uh, areas a little more, uh, given the uh, experience of our audience here today. Okay, good. Let's see how that turned out then. Hope there's enough time. Let's see. All right, it looks like a slight majority for cold form foil. Is that what you expected to see there? A little bit. It is a very popular solution. Uh, it provides an excellent barrier for ingress, uh, certainly. Okay, great. Um, everyone, again, I think we have another poll lined up here. So, yeah, same rules, except this time just click one option, click Submit, and then wait for that next slide. But the question is, do you use nitrogen purging? So, yes or no? Okay, so we need a little bit of time to vote on that. But again, Craig, uh, what do you hope to see here then? What made you ask this? Certainly, the, the first question was more focused on moisture management. This is solely based on oxygen uh, management. See if our audience is, uh, experiences more issues or the level of, is of interest in an oxygen solution. Okay, very good. Hopefully we can just see how that turned out now. Oh, looks like a majority for no. Talk about right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is more rare, more frequently uh, applications require moisture management, but oxygen, I believe this is a growing area uh, for uh, active management. Okay, very good. Uh, feel free to take it away then. Uh, certainly. Uh, thank you, Kyle. So for here, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Active Blister Solutions as a moisture oxygen management system for, for all sources of moisture and, uh, and oxygen. I'd like to direct your attention to the lower right-hand corner. What looks like an ordinary blister package is Active Blister Solutions. Underneath that capsule, you can see a small white material. It is a polymer. This material is engineered to absorb tailored amounts of moisture or oxygen or both. Above that, you can see an exploded view where the Aptar CSP product, Active Blister Solutions, is attached to foil. We use the existing currently available foil, and it is also used with existing available thermoforms to create an actively managed uh, product. Uh, the capacity as well as the uptake rate can be customized. Uh, it's worth noting uh, there are some oxygen scavenging products that require moisture to be active. Uh, not true here. If you require to minimize oxygen and moisture, uh, this technology can do that. And I'll speak to it uh, later, but uh, active blisters can be integrated into existing as well as new uh, packaging lines. 
So you've seen the picture, and the question might be, how does this work? It's a very small piece of material inside this blister package. How is it providing all of this? Uh, well, Badre introduced it. It is using our engineered polymers. We're, we're adding chemistry to polymers, and as you saw in the introduction as well, this is not just a surface effect. There are small channels in that material, and those channels uh, are loaded with your desiccant or your scavenger, and there are, those channels are large enough for an oxygen or a moisture molecule to pass into. And that is how Aptar CSP can provide a, a maximum amount of capacity in such a confined space, which makes uh, active blister an, an excellent uh, application here. And while we've been speaking just about moisture and, and oxygen, the technology can be designed for, for any target uh, gas or reactive impurities. We have done uh, projects around carbon dioxide, around formaldehyde. So if there is a target gas that uh, is not readily available on market today for scavenging, uh, we can certainly work with you uh, to scavenge that. Another key feature of active blister is the way that it is attached to the foil. We use heat staking, uh, so we're applying it with heat and pressure. The important part is that we're not using uh, solvents, or not using adhesives, rather. And those adhesives, even the clean ones, uh, have residual solvents. And the issue with residual solvents in pharma packaging, they can migrate into the package of that in the headspace here. They can show up in analytical tests as impurities. They can adversely react with your drug product or create odors. So Aptar CSP, we have done a study. We've uh, created a white paper. You see a small picture of it here. That's a GC scan of residual solvents uh, from uh, an adhesive. So uh, to solve this, uh, we've gone with heat staking, an uh, absolutely adhesive-free solution for attaching this to foils. Uh, the next two slides, uh, you've heard us talk about capacity and kinetics. Uh, it is one thing to have enough capacity. It is also to remove that moisture or oxygen uh, in a timely manner, quickly. This uh, chart is simply to illustrate that we are able to engineer that polymer to go very quickly, to absorb moisture quickly, or to go slowly over time, the kinetics. So it is two parts here. This uh, technology can give you the capacity as well as the kinetics. Here we're measuring the, the amount of moisture that is absorbed by our product. Here for oxygen, we're measuring the pull down of oxygen in that headspace over time. Again, just to say that it can be engineered to go as fast or as slow as possible. So it is our experience that it's not always just a capacity question, it is also a question of kinetics. How quickly can you pull this down? Uh, so to summarize what we've shown here today and talk very uh, pointedly about the value of active blister for oral solid dose packaging. Uh, probably four things we can we bring to oral solid dose packaging. One is moving from a bottle to a blister. Uh, this can be both an existing product on the market that is using a drop-in solution or a product that is in clinical trial or stability study today in a bottle and wishes to have a blister option for marketing. Uh, active blister can enhance the shelf life of any cold form or thermal foam product, whether it's on the market or in development. If any of these options we looked at earlier, purging, secondary packaging, fish bone are being used, uh, active blister can eliminate all those complexities uh, in your package. And lastly, uh, for any application using cold form, uh, this can enable the use of thermoforms because it can absorb not only the initial headspace, but active blister can absorb ingress, uh, which can enable the use of thermoform. Uh, so that is the product, uh, but certainly uh, no product can get to market without uh, services. So we are very pleased to introduce Accelerate Development Services. It's a complete solution from stability challenge to product launch. Now I'll come back to this slide and speak to all the components, but for now I'd like to focus on this first one. The first part of any project is, is understanding the impact of oxygen moisture on, on the application and then using that data to design uh, the best package. And for this, 
Aptar CSP is very pleased to partner with FreeThink Free Technologies and their expertise in accelerated shelf life study. Uh, so now I'm happy to hand off the presentation uh, to Maria. Thank you very much, Craig. FreeThink Technologies is very pleased to partner with CSP Aptar to help customers understand exactly how an active lifter packaging configuration would look for their particular product. Today I'd like to take you through how we assess stability through what we call an Accelerated Stability Assessment Program, or ASAP for short. What we're aiming to derive from this program is a fundamental understanding of the temperature and humidity dependence of a particular product. This allows many things. For instance, a traditional ICH stability study is often done with multiple packaging configurations studied in parallel. In contrast, with a fundamental predictive model of stability, packaging configurations can be assessed simultaneously ahead of long stability programs, and resources can be focused on ones which are the most productive, and, for instance, an active lister configuration. There are other advantages. For instance, if a product undergoes an excursion during storage or, or transport, that excursion often causes a large batch of drug product to be um, disposed of if it can't be assessed whether or not it is still able to achieve the target shelf life. With a predictive model, that question can be quantitatively assessed. And for many excursions, the product is still quite able to reach the shelf life afterwards. There is also a large speed advantage of using an accelerated approach. At the timescale of a traditional ICH stability program is on the order of six months to get useful information for deciding on packaging. With an ASAP study, you can get an answer in about six weeks to evaluate whether a packaging configuration will work for your particular product. I'd like to step you through what an accelerated stability assessment program looks like. The first step is to expose a product under several open and very high stress conditions. A traditional ICH stability program spans about a 15 degree temperature range and a 15% relative humidity range. In contrast, an ASAP study may look at a product over a range of something like 40 degrees Celsius and 80 to 90% relative humidity. We're looking for a model which fits product behavior under all of those conditions. The product is exposed open to those, and on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see a little image of one way to do that. The product is in an open vial. The relative humidity is set, in this case, by a saturated salt solution, and temperature and humidity can be monitored with loggers or other methods. Once the product is exposed for varying amounts of time, the shelf life limiting characteristic of that product will be measured. This depends on the particular drug product, but is often things like growth of related substances, loss of assay, changes in color, or changes in dissolution properties. Once that data set is collected, that data set is modeled within FreeSync Technologies software program, ASAP Prime. What we're doing is we're going from an experimental data set under stressed conditions to understand an underlying product model that can be used to evaluate many different packaging configurations. Before I continue on, I'd like to address the question of kinetic model independence. We need to be looking at kinetic rates without lengthy kinetic studies. It's the case that over half of drug products show quite complex kinetics. This can make, take many forms. Sometimes it's something as simple as secondary degradation. You can have autocatalysis, <coughs> autocatalysis reactions, inhibition. And it's worth keeping in mind that most drug products are very heterogeneous systems. If you look at the image on the right, the small rectangles are a crystalline API. You can imagine that an API molecule in the center of that crystal is experiencing a very different microenvironment from those at the surface, which are interacting with the large particles, which are excipients. Every different microenvironment gives you different kinetic rates, and the measured rates are some superposition of all of those. Modeling these can be challenging. The solution that FreeSync uses is 
time to failure. When we stress a drug product, we stress it under each set of stress conditions to the edge of failure. This data set allows us to extrapolate back to understand the time to failure, or time to the specification level, under ambient storage conditions. What is underlying this model? We use a humidity-corrected Arrhenius equation. Those of you coming from a chemistry background will recognize the first part of this equation as a very familiar and old equation linking kinetic rate constants to a temperature dependence characterized by an activation energy, Ea. The latter part of the equation draws on decades of work showing that most drug products have a humidity sensitivity, which can be characterized by a factor, which we call B. In a similar way to treating moisture, Friesic can assess oxidative stability. From an experimental point of view, there's two levels of looking at this. We can have a simple yes-no experiment with oxygen absorbers, where an oxygen absorber is added to certain stress conditions to see whether oxidation matters for the reaction. If it's determined that oxidation is important, then studies can be conducted at controlled oxygen levels to quantify the specific oxygen dependence. In a similar manner to moisture, FreeThink can model oxidation de oxygen dependence. I'd like to talk you through a little, about, little bit about what the moisture and temperature dependence looks like when you look at an actual drug product. First, let's look at the temperature dependence. The ICH assumes that all products can be treated with a single activation energy. When you're doing an ASAP study, you're determining the activation energy for your particular drug product. This can make a big difference. If we use a low activation energy, such as what is assumed by the ICH, then half a year of stability at 40 degrees Celsius is equivalent to about two years of stability, shelf life, at 25 degrees Celsius. But if we go up to a more average activation energy, something like 29 kcals per mole, a half year stability at 40 degrees Celsius is actually equivalent to five years of shelf life at 25 degrees Celsius. If you go to higher activation energies, this difference is even more distinct. The moisture dependence can also have a large impact on shelf life. What I'm showing here is two different packaging configurations. This is a drug product packaged in a thermoform blister, a very permeable blister of PVC. And the only difference between these two packaging configurations is a 5% relative humidity difference. If the product is not moisture sensitive, these two product packaging configurations have identical shelf life. However, if we go to a high but quite normal moisture sensitivity with a B value of about 0.09, we can find up to a two-year difference in shelf life. And I'll note that the 5% relative humidity difference shown here is actually within the allowable range for variation of humidity in an ICH stability chamber. Yet it has a massive impact on shelf life. One way to think about the moisture sensitivity factor is the larger the moisture sensitivity a product has, the more its stability can be effectively controlled with packaging. For folks who have not thought about moisture and, and temperature dependence, I wanted to show you a, a, an example of certain values that are measured for actual drug products measured at FreeThink. As you can see, there are average values shown on the slide, but there's quite a range of values that are typically observed. Now I'd like to step you through how a model is built and how it can be used. What I'll be showing you today is data collected for a tablet drug product produced at FreeThink Technologies. This, this data set tracks growth of a related substance, and the specification level for this particular drug product is 3% degradant growth. The first step is that that data is entered into the pro software program as percent degraded growth at different conditions. We can plot that data set and look as you have different stress conditions how the product will respond. You can see in the data set here that it makes a very large difference depending on what the temperature and humidity is. 
For example, if the product is at about 50 degrees Celsius and about 30% relative humidity, it is somewhat past the specification limit of 3% growth after 21 days. However, if that temperature is increased to 70 degrees Celsius at a similar humidity at the bottom, bottom graph, you can see that that specification limit is, is passed in a single day. Out of each of these graphs, you'll notice that there's a green line fitting through the data. That's modeling growth over time of the degradant. Where that passes the specification limit is the edge of failure. And that is fundamentally the data that we're getting out of this data set. Those edge of failure times are put into the software program for each stress condition. From that data set, a single model is used to predict all of those times. This gives you the temperature sensitivity EA and the moisture sensitivity B for a particular product. I'd like to step back and talk about packaged product stability. As Craig laid out earlier, there's different sources of moisture for a particular product and packaging. Moisture enters through packaging and this is characterized quantitatively by the moisture vapor transmission rate. Moisture also is present inside the packaging. Some of this is in the headspace, but much of it is held by tablet, the drug product or any desiccant present. The amount held by those, those substances is characterized by the moisture sorption isotherm of a product. That moisture sorption isotherm can be entered directly through our software program. It's also the case that if you don't have this experimental data, but you have your formulation, we have within our software program moisture sorption isotherm data for many different common excipients. And you can build your formulation within the program to get a sum summary, a weighted average moisture sorption isotherm. This takes care of the amount of moisture that's held by a drug product. However, you also have moisture coming through the packaging. Our database includes many popular packaging characteristics. It has the moisture vapor transmission rate for each of those. If you have more specific data for your own product, you can enter that directly. When you combine moisture sorption isotherms and MVTR data, what you have is a calculated value of relative humidity inside packaging over time. As you can see in this case, this is not a constant value. It's increasing over time in most cases. Let's step back. What we have now is a stability model which characterizes your particular product's temperature and relative humidity dependence. We also have calculated relative humidity inside packaging as a function of time at any particular temperature of interest. When these are put together, what we have is stability inside packaging over time. So I'd like to show you how this, how this uh, shows up. We have here a model with this all put together. I'm going to start with a case where there's no packaging for the drug product. What I'm showing you here in the lower left-hand side is a predicted plot of mean degradant growth over time in the blue line, and then the standard deviation shown in green and red. The specification level is shown with the yellow line, in this case 3%. Also, in the lower right-hand corner, you see a graph of the relative humidity over time. Now, the external conditions for this product are 25 degrees Celsius and 60% humidity. Since there's no packaging, the humidity is a flat 60% over time, as shown in that graph. Now, this package has a calculated probability of passing of 0%, so it clearly needs packaging. What happens if we put it in cold form packaging? So in this case, you'll notice that the relative humidity over time drops. And it also changes very little over time. In this case, it's not starting at zero because the drug product itself starts at a particular amount of moisture. 
However, that amount is not growing significantly over time. However, in this case, the product is still not predicted to pass. It has about a 5% probability of passing. What happens if we, instead we use a popular thermoform, thermoform blister? I'm showing a 2 mil Aclar thermoform blister here, where you have a significantly increased uh, relative humidity over time compared to the cold form packaging. In this case, we we have um, we have a very low probability of passing. It's gone down to zero. What happens when we add the CSP active film? And what you're seeing is we have packaging with 2 mil Aclar, showing a very low probability of passing. When we add an engineered polymer film to that, what we get is all of a sudden we've jumped to a 99% probability of passing. With this engineered polymer film, the, the relative humidity inside the blister has dropped very significantly. And that is what is helping the shelf life of this product. I'd like to to expand these results and show them in a slightly larger format. Here we have a comparison between cold form packaging, in which case the degradant growth is reduced from no packaging, but is, is still quite significant over a two year period. We have thermoform, two mil Aclar, and finally we have a very drastic reduction in degradant growth when the, the CSP Aptar active film is added. What we find is that thermoform plus an engineered polyform for active blister can often outperform cold form packaging. There's a particular advantage to this. If the starting water content for the drug product is high, since cold form will trap that moisture inside the packaging, but can't address a way to take it out over time. And with that, I'd like to, to, to focus on the deliverables from a 3 fink ASAP study. So from the perspective of moisture, we can give shelf life predictions for any climate zone of interest, blister permeabilities that are needed to protect a drug product, the amount of desiccant that's needed to protect a drug product, such as can be added with active blister. From a perspective of oxygen, we have shelf life predictions by oxygen level. We have oxygen permeability that are needed to protect that product from oxidative degradation. And finally, we can calculate the amount of oxygen absorber needed to protect a product through active blister. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Craig. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Maria. Thank you for managing through some technical difficulties as well. And uh, bringing back to our Accelerate Development Services, and uh, consistently what we've heard from customers is helping them design the optimized active blister, eliminating time-consuming multi-arm studies in our uh, partnership with Rethink Technologies and the uh, tools and processes you just heard about give us just that. Um, so as you look at this overall process, that is the first part. Uh, then move into our support and products for feasibility study, uh, clinical trial stability production, design verification. Uh, after our CSP will support you through your regulatory preparedness and operational uh, preparedness as you adopt this new technology uh, commercially as well. But if we break this up into to two parts, the key part here is get to an optimized design as quickly as possible. That is our partnership with Freethink uh, Technology. The next part, key part, is getting customers to clinical trial and stability production. And that is where we have also partnered with PCI Pharma and Ivers Lee. I'm advancing my slide here. Uh, here you go, you can see that now. Uh, so with our partnerships with PCI and Ivers Lee, we can provide clinical trial stability production capabilities. PCI is a global organization with uh, active blister capabilities beginning in Q2 uh, within the US. Uh, Ivers Lee, our partner in Europe, has operations in Switzerland and Germany and has installed capabilities to produce active blister uh, product uh, today. So together, uh, we offer our customers uh, 
two options for clinical trial and stability production. A future webinar will, will highlight their capabilities and expertise. Uh, today, we're focusing on uh, the design part with uh, FreeThink, but uh, no doubt a, a whole uh, subject webinar could be uh, our partnership and capabilities there. A key part of getting to market quickly as possible here. Uh, to summarize and uh, take away uh, three here, uh, Active Blister Solutions provides a, a comprehensive oxygen moisture management uh, system. All sources of moisture and oxygen can be mitigated and sufficient capacity can be designed and uh, put into place. Uh, FreeThink Technologies ASAP testing and ASAP Prime determine shelf life characteristics and design that optimized Active Blister package solution to achieve your desired shelf life. In addition to those products and services, Accelerate Services provides the technology service for the entire process. Expedite active packaging from I have a stability issue all the way through commercialization. So thank you very much for your time and attention today. Uh, Kyle, I'll hand it back to you. All right, thank you very much. I think it's time for Q&A, all right? So a quick reminder to everyone, you can still ask questions just by sending them in in the top left-hand corner, type them in, click Submit, and wait to hear if they're read aloud. But I see we have quite a few here, so let's begin. All right, so first question asks, can slash has ASAP been used to understand slash predict physical integrity issues, as in crushability, related to removal of tablets from blisters for products where humidity may influence the product? So it's an ASAP approach has been used for multiple physical stability issues, but not specifically crushability. So some of the most common physical stability issues that we run into are dissolution and color changes. And those have both been successfully modeled multiple times with an ASAP approach. There's certain other physical characteristics, such as sedimentation, which we does not uh, lend itself to an ASAP approach. Um, for the perspective of crushability, that's not something that we've assessed specifically. Okay, thank you very much. Our next question asks, uh, do you see this technology as competing or complementing high barrier thermoforming materials such as a class ACLR? I'll take that one. Uh, so when you're using a desiccant or a scavenger and you're creating a low RH environment or a low oxygen environment, you need a level of barrier protection, uh, absolutely. It is a complement. Uh, it is that combination that creates uh, uh, an active and protected system. So barrier technology is still needed, uh, and it's our work with FreeThink to pair what is the right amount of desiccant with the right amount of barrier technology. It's a holistic approach, uh, but no doubt, uh, I would say, complementary, and uh, it, is, it is definitely a system approach to pair uh, both barrier plus uh, desiccant. Okay, thank you. We've got another question here from someone who wants to know what you mean by fishbone packaging. They're not familiar with the term. <laughs> yeah, uh, a little bit of uh, terminology there. So whenever your desiccant or scavenger is in a separate chamber from your tablet, they are sometimes uh, connected through a thin channel. Uh, that channel is sometimes referred to a fishbone, or that overall design is a fishbone. Uh, so it, it can be effective. It is a larger footprint to execute, to practice that design. Uh, that is why we've uh, developed Active Blister, actually, to eliminate that, where we put the desiccant and the oral solid dose in the same blister uh, space to eliminate the channel or fishbone, as you would. Okay, very good. Our next question asks, can this product be used to dry powder in Halo capsule products? These products predominantly have temperature issues related to physical changes. Uh, yes, it can. Uh, so here in that scenario, it is a, a capsule. Uh, so everything we've talked about today, uh, protecting it from moisture from the initial water content and in, uh, inside that capsule to uh, moisture around it in the headspace, and all applies uh, in, in any capsule design, including a dry powder inhaler. 
Yeah, and if you're thinking about multi-dose dropout inhalers that are uh, blister-based dropout inhalers, multi-dose, we, there are active projects where we're looking at integrating the three-phase technology molded parts inside the complete system and that will provide ongoing moisture control. So for the multi-dose, there are ways to integrate the, the three-phase technology and for the capsule base, there is the active blister, and for the reservoir powders, you would imagine that will be the most suitable delivery system for the for the active uh, technology, where you can essentially house the uh, uh, the powder with a dedicated molded part. So across the respiratory product uh, portfolio of, of DPIs, there are ways to to provide solutions specific for them. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question asks, does the material, particularly moisture and oxygen control, uh, come in different loadings? And if so, what loadings? Uh, yes, it does. It comes in different loadings. For oxygen here, we can uh, change the amount of capacity uh, within the capsule. For moisture, there are a couple of different options there. Oftentimes, someone will want to minimize the relative humidity inside a blister, and that's a more aggressive desiccant. Other times, someone is, is not, does not want to overdry that capsule. This is often seen with gelatin capsules, where overdrying can be a negative, can be a problem. Uh, there, we'll use a silica gel desiccant. Uh, it may also be or desirable to have an elevated RH. Uh, there, uh, the active blister solutions can be preloaded uh, to provide an elevated RH. It all starts with what is the desired humidity storage condition for the application. Then we'll design the active blister product uh, to meet those and maintain those. All right, thank you. Another question asked, is there a generally accepted probability threshold for using ASAP models to set shelf life for respiratory fillings, filings? Sorry. At FreeSync, we recommend using a 95% probability of passing as the, the recommended probability level. Okay, very good. Another question asked, uh, can ASAP be used for physical stability? Yes, and I think I alluded to before, it, it depends on the physical stability characteristic. So some, such as color changes in dissolution, we know can be addressed very effectively with an ASAP approach. Others, such as sedimentation, work by a different mechanism and cannot be modeled. Okay, thank you. A uh, quick reminder to the audience, you can still ask questions if you want to. Uh, just send them in via the questions widget, click submit, and there's still time, so maybe a few more to be read aloud. Okay, I see we have just a few more left here. So. Has there been any commercial product in the marketing using the active blister in the U.S.? Uh, so we use uh, this technology in many marketed products today, in transdermal, and even some fishbone designs as well. Uh, for the active blister design we're talking about, we'll have a, a first application uh, next year, as a matter of fact, in building uh, both that clinical capability and commercial capability uh, as we speak. Uh, so definitely a proven technology uh, used in the marketplace, uh, DMF on file with the FDA has been reviewed, and uh, uh, now, starting in 2019, a commercial product for, for active blister. All right, thank you. Uh, next question asks, what other gases can be managed with active blister? I'm sorry, Kyle, can you repeat what that other question? Gases? Gases. Ah, yes. Uh, so, yeah, we focused on, on oxygen here, but uh, our ability to engineer polymers applies to any target gas. Uh, so we can add the chemistry to active blister to uh, scavenge whatever target gas. I mentioned uh, we've done projects around CO2, uh, formaldehyde, uh, but uh, certainly not limited to those. All right, thank you. Another question asking, has the ASAP study been validated and can it be used for GMP applications? Our ASAP studies have been used for a variety of different approaches for GMP applications. A number of our software users use GMP analytical ASAP studies um, and the software is, is validated. Okay, good. Um, 
is this new technology only developed by APSA, or is this a global issue that is being addressed by all pharmaceutical packaging industries? Uh, I'll take that. Uh, so as far as oxygen and moisture sensitive oral solid doses and, and the, the demand for uh, active packaging, uh, we see it globally, uh, certainly, and are building a business to, to meet the global demand for active packaging. Yeah, well, one other aspect of that question, I mean, as we see the rise of sensitive drugs, particularly biologics and, and, and other um, conversion from bottles to, to active blister, we're seeing a, a trending towards that space. And as a result, finding uh, creative ways and uh, um, technical ways to address moisture or other environmental conditions, whether you're zone two or three or four, and being able to tailor um, solutions for the, the, the product on the, the capsule of blister, those are things that we are facing more and more. We've seen a, a lot of challenges coming our way. So uh, the good news, we have a platform technology that is able to be deployed for active blister or other uh, uh, um, products that are being faced with the same environmental challenges. So it's, it's, it's a great point. It's a worldwide a challenge in, in this space. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much. I think that may just do it for... Oh, hang on. I think we have one more question here that we want to just ask him. <coughs> How easy or difficult to open blister cavity with desiccant inside each cavity? What specific tests has been done? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, so we, we didn't show a, a kind of an open blister there, but uh, adding active blister does not change the, the physics of how a blister package opens. The tearing still happens just as it would in a traditional blister. The foil is the, the breaking point there and pushes out and that uh, active blister stays attached to, to the foil when it is pushed out. Uh, we have done uh, user studies and we've certainly gotten uh, feedback uh, from customers who are developing this. Uh, so it does not change uh, that user experience. All right, thank you. We actually have some more questions here, so let's get through them now. So what is the regulatory status of active blister approach? So, you know, as Craig mentioned earlier, the, 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 the material, the, the platform technology has already been proven and deployed in uh, different products in the marketplace. So from, a, from an extractable point of view, uh, from a, a, a grass material point of view, those have been uh, demonstrated to be safe and effective without any extractable concerns uh, from a packaging point of view. And, and we've mentioned that there's a DMF in place. So the, the, uh, uh, from a material uh, point of view, those things have been overcome. And as we mentioned, uh, the active blister um, packaging part of it has been in, in clinical trials, and we expect a uh, uh, first product to be approved in Q119. So we don't expect any regulatory challenges, uh, but as, as everybody knows in the audience, you, uh, there still need to be an overall finished product, the regulatory submissions, you have to uh, account for the full submission, but uh, material uh, concerns from, from the technology itself is something that we don't think is going to be an issue. Okay, thank you very much. That actually is all we have time for today, which just leaves you a big thanks for Bajre, Craig, and Maria for what a great presentation, and of course to APSA, CSP Technologies, for sponsoring this session. Okay, so to everyone listening, you're going to receive an email shortly letting you know how to access the on-demand version of this webinar, or you can access this through our website, which is www.business-review-webinars.com. Uh, we look forward to sharing further webinars with you, so please do keep an eye out on the website just mentioned, and follow us on Twitter at BL Webinars for Daily Updates, and join our LinkedIn group, Business Review Webinars. Thank you all once again, and I hope you all have a very nice day.